Fresh meat. How do you kill, kill what's already dead, dead? In the fall of 2003, a trailer that now looks right out of the Sci-Fi Channel, or The Asylum, was released. It promised mayhem, zombies, and blood with young leads, plenty of violence, and being based on a known video game franchise. The film promised something fun and showed some of the right imagery to sell the product to movie-going audiences. Well, maybe. So join us as we see just how awfully good is Uwe Boll's House of the Dead. While not director Uwe Boll's first film, House of the Dead is the first one that brought him to the eyeballs of most horror viewers. We're sorry. I'm not going to worry about that right now. We've got bigger problems. Basically, folks had no idea what to expect from the man and his work on American soils, and the trailer made it look like something that could perhaps be fun. Oh, silly people. So the marketing and PR pressed on, and pushed the film in all kinds of ways, including presence at horror conventions and tie-in promotions. This was going to be huge. This was also going to be fun. I mean, this was definitely going to be something. Then the film came out. Some folks made fun of it, some folks talked about it in excited ways. Most of those people had not seen the film yet. With a box office just barely above its cost at 13.8 million versus 12, this was not exactly a runaway hit. However, with time and a home audience, House of the Dead found its people. Those people were lovers of bad films who swear by this one. That being said, the fact that it was not a total box office failure led to many more Uwe Boll video game adaptations. While those are, um, interesting, House of the Dead is the one that started it all. So it has a special place in the hearts of bad movie lovers. So what exactly do we have here? The simplest way to put it is House of the Dead is insane. It has everything. Zombies, violence, big guns, nudity, questionable fashion, and some even more questionable editing. This is the ultimate love to hate it or hate to love it kind of film. So how does this movie go? Thanks for watching Awfully Good, and ask that if you enjoy our shows, please subscribe to our channel right now, like this video, and click on the bell so you can be notified each time a new video goes up. And now, back to the show. After opening on Mortal Kombat-like music, we get some narration. So many dead people, so many victims. Always a sign of a great film. Then we get a group of friends who miss the boat to Isla de Muerte, where a massive rave is happening. This rave is something interesting in a fire festival kind of way and is shown with a handful of partygoers and a couple of DJs on stage, one of whom is played by Canadian singer Biff Naked. Our group of stranded partiers meets a boat's first mate, played by Clint Howard, who seems a bit off. He doesn't want to take them, but eventually his boat captain, named Kirk, yes, Captain Kirk, accepts to take them. They get on the boat, are followed by cops like it's striking distance, and make it to the island. There is definitely a party there. Somewhere. Now the film is barely getting going, and we've gotten Clint Howard, Jurgen Prochnow, and Ellie Cornell. The rest of the young cast is filled out with people you might recognize. There's Erica Durrance getting all sorts of naked. Definitely didn't see that when she was Lois Lane on Smallville. Our lead, Rudy, at least I think he's our lead, is actually Jonathan Cherry from the same year's Final Destination 2, as well as the hilarious Wolf Cop. Everyone else kind of blends into the scenery, and you're just left waiting for them to get murdered by some zombies. Thankfully, not everyone is as clueless as they look. Well, maybe. Now that the situation is, well, situated, we have a bunch of people on an island with no way out and a bunch of zombies on the loose. And can we talk about how the big plan here was to come to an abandoned island to have a rave? It's almost like the big plan was actually just to get murdered instead. Despite the movie featuring a lot of them, the zombies here are pretty generic. 
They often just look like people wearing rubber suits, but there's a little bit of everything here. Some green-blue Return of the Living Dead zombies, some demons-inspired zombies, some red-glow-eyed zombies, some fast zombies, some slow zombies. The wardrobe and makeup effects folks did their research and put as many zombie film references in there as they could. Considering that this was co-written by Dave Parker, the filmmaker behind The Dead Hate the Living, and a few other awesomely nerdy horror films, this may also have been in the script, at least partially. Let's continue with our movie and its general mayhem. There is so much running away from, fighting off, and killing of zombies that once the big guns come out, the swords also come out, and the film starts going in very video gamey ways with its camera movements and quick edits. The editing is at times just right, and at times it comes off like a squirrel on Red Bull was given the job. Here and there, the film also finds ways to splice in parts of the video game to make it more exciting, or show how badly that game footage has aged over the years. Keep track of those splices, as they could be a fun game later on. Now, what else goes on in this film? And can we really spoil a film of this quality that is almost 20 years old? Not really. So here are the deets that may sell this film to those still wondering if they should spend 90 minutes with this masterpiece. Nudity. Enough of it for all to be happy with, and to displease plenty of parents in the parental guidance section of IMDb. Mostly boobs to be honest, but any boob is a good boob. Zombies. A badass fighting Asian girl in an American flag printed sexy onesie named Liberty. Okay. Clint Howard. That's it. Just Clint Howard. All the zombies you could want. Jürgen Prochnoy chewing some scenery like it's his job. Can't blame him for still getting letter from me, can you? <laughs> zombies that come in waves. Just enough locations to keep the protagonists moving and give them enough excuses to fight new waves of zombies. So many bullets fired that there's no way they brought that many or found that many. Grenades and jumping away from their explosion, Michael Bay style. Or, well, as close to that as they could. A Spanish priest turned scientist wanting to find the secret to eternal life, making him into some sort of Franken priest. There are a couple mini romances in here, somewhere, and they kind of make sense in a bonding through trauma sort of way. Kind of like speed. And more zombies. This film is a mess. A hot mess. And a whole lot of fun. Now the sequel we can't vouch for. It's just too much. Or perhaps not enough. It's hard to tell really. However, the first film is so glorious, it's got all of the above. But it's not just about the fact that it's got all of this. It has all of this in repeating patterns, clearly wanting to match the video game. And it's different time zones and waves of zombies. It has a lot of nonsense, but somehow it makes sense here. The film has a fairly fun cast to be honest, and everyone is either into it or hamming it up. So there is entertainment aplenty. The bits of video games spliced in could have easily been omitted, and it would have gone a bit smoother and looked a bit better. Those scenes are aging really badly, but the fact that the zombies are practical kind of makes up for it. The pop culture references set in our world, and the constant fighting and shooting of zombies keep the action going and going. There aren't many down moments here, and that's a good thing. This film has a ton going on, and if you're not indulging in some top booze while watching, you might want some Dramamine before pressing play. There's plenty of quick cuts to give someone a migraine or a seizure, so be careful going in. That said, those with none of these issues will want to grab a beer, or a few shots, to play with this film. So pull up your drink of choice and try these potential drinking games. And be careful, some are bound to get people drunk faster than others. The Lightweight. Take a drink of your choice and have a sip for every boob you catch a glimpse of. Party People. Take a shot every time someone is drinking alcohol on screen. Hold My Beer. Better played with beer to avoid alcohol poisoning. 
drink some of that choice beer, preferably straight from the bottle, like in the film, every time there's a pop culture reference. There are many throughout, but some will require more attention to be paid in the film. The Zombie Preferred tiki drink in hand? Have fun counting the types of zombies on screen, and where they're from. Whoever finishes their drink first wins a strong hangover the next day. Or use for video game spliced scenes. For those who would rather not drink, a fun menu can be made to go with the film. Think anything that looks a bit chewed off, charred meat to go with the zombie explosions, meat on the bone for those who want to pretend they are zombies, tiki or island themed food, just make sure you wait until they are on the island, as there is some boat puking that may not be a great meal starter here. <laughs> and now for a little post food and booze trivia. House of the Dead is only one of many video game adaptations by Uwe Boll. While it may be one of his early films, it may be his best game adaptation. In the Name of the King and its sequels are nowhere near as fun. Even with Jason Statham in the first and Dolph Lundgren in the second, there's just something special about House of the Dead. The last film to ever use the dizzying turntable camera that spins around the actors. This practice was stopped for being too dangerous as it can get the actors hurt or killed. The film actually takes place before the first video game, which came out in 1996. A total of 32 video game shots or scenes are used in the movie. Talk about padding your runtime. The director's cut is actually called the funny version, and it starts with Uwe Boll getting tied up and forced to watch the movie. He then gives commentary while essentially dragging the film and even playing fart noises. True class. You created it all so you could be immortal. Why? Do it forever. Um, yeah, that's what being immortal is. Dumbass. Fans of Dave Parker, fear not. This is not the version he wrote or wanted to bring to the screen. While he is still credited, the final version of the film is very far from his vision. The reviews of the film were so bad, Danish cinemas passed on playing it on their screens. So why exactly is this awfully good? Well, it's a video game adaptation by Uwe Boll. This should be enough of an explanation. But for those not familiar with his work, his fans would probably say that this film is the one that started it all. The most insane of the bunch, but also the most fun of his films. House of the Dead does not take itself too seriously and clearly has fun with adding all the video game tropes that it can fit in there, as well as just killing off characters as they just don't matter. Don't get attached to anyone here. Just remember, if you ever find yourself with the rights to some video game franchise, keep Uwe Boll away from it. Far, far away from it. Please. Basically, my message is fuck yourself. It's all